Hello everyone, we are here, we are live, we are ready to go, and we are back in Kerbin sized real solar system. This is a mod where it is real solar system, but scaled down to Kerbin sizes, and I have a whole collection of mods to go along with that. Some of my favorites, some of which are new. Uh, and uh, just to pick up where we are, I had just... At the conclusion of last week's stream, built a mapping satellite. It's about a little less than nine days away from being built, so we'll definitely be seeing that uh, a little later in this video. It's going to be mapping biomes for us, and I'm kind of eager to get a biome map going because I have no idea. I know we're, these are forests where we are now. We are uh, at Cape Canaveral, Florida, and I know this is all forest. Uh, forests around us and obviously it's water out there but i have no idea where the other biomes are and i really kind of would like to my science is pretty sparse so i really would like to start collecting all kinds of science and uh, maybe speaking a bit about mod at last stream i was sort of um uh, frustrated i guess frustrated is the right word I, I i did a bit of tweaking when it came to the mods one of the mods i got rid of is comnet constellations i tried repeatedly over the past few streams to try and get that working i couldn't get that working for those that didn't catch those streams and i'm familiar with the mod the mod uh puts ground stations all around the earth and then but they're not they're not unlocked and then you have to spend money to unlock them and to upgrade them and uh, I, I i i find that works really well i thought that i or at least sorry i love the idea but i just couldn't get it to work so basically now i just have the normal thing where there's some ground stations scattered around so communication in orbit shouldn't be an issue anymore the other thing i was looking at getting rid of was the actual tech tree this is the c i keep thinking csi <laughs> but that's the c i s tech tree um it is a pros before crew style tech tree where you unlock small probe bodies and small rockets first and then work your way up towards getting crude crafts going like for instance this looks like here space exploration oh, i shouldn't get too deep into it somewhere up here is where the capsules are like here you got simple capsules for instance the mark one's way over there so we're starting with uncrewed crafts we are building planes and jets and stuff like that and i still hinted at maybe moving over to uncurbled start which honestly of all the various tech trees i've tried is probably my favorite a uh, little part of me kind of wishes that i did start with uncurbled start and what i did is i kind of put in another instance of ksp did the same batch of mods but with uncurbled start start playing to see if i could get to sort of roughly the same place as where i am right here but with a different tech tree uh, just to get the idea of, you know, maybe I might switch over, but the truth is the tech trees are too different and the vessels, especially the orbital rockets, really changed quite a lot. Actually, the planes changed quite a lot because Uncurable Start starts you with all of these uh, wonderful prop planes, which are buried up here somewhere i don't even know where they are but all these wonderful little prop engines that are just wonderful they're right off the bat and so you can build these cute little prop plot planes so the planes would be very different but also the rocket like right here we got look at like this is the swivel engine but this one the torch engine i've been using that a lot as my go-to uh orbital booster but it is in uncurbal start quite a ways down the tech tree you start with much smaller rockets this tech tree puts those smaller rockets up here, which I don't know why, but that's where they are. So it ended up meaning that the, the vessels turned out to be very different. So I decided not to make the switch because I thought that would be all too confusing. Maybe at some point, um, I might, uh, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm trying things I've not tried before, so you never quite know. Now, before I actually get too deep into this, I always like to begin these streams by welcoming, well, first of all, recognizing my Patreon patrons and YouTube members who support the channels. If you see my studio videos, my edited ones, I have credits at the end where I show all their names, and that is great. Uh, I really absolutely do appreciate all of that support, but I also like to recognize my most recent sign on so in the last week my most recent sign-ons are dash and william dwyer so thank you very much dash and william for jumping aboard and of course a very very special thank you to everybody 
who directly supports this channel either through Patreon or through YouTube or just supports the channel through subscription and through uh, commenting and through being in the chat right now. So actually, let's see, I'm just going through my little list of things to make sure that I take a look at. Oh, we have one. Th uh, this is really dumb. <laughs> This is really dumb. So this is MapSat 1, and I want to take a quick look at it. This is the one, or MapSat 2. I already got MapSat 1. MapSat 1, by the way, for those people that aren't familiar with ScanSat, is already doing an altimetry scan, and you can see it's already done a good chunk of it. It's all in service of a contract, which is right here to scan 75% of the planet. We are at 14%. And so we're, it's it's progressing. It's going through and scanning. And what I want to do next, I've got another contract to add a multi-spectral scan sat survey. And that's a biome scan. So it'll tell me all the different biomes. And that's what MapSat 2 here is all about. So we're going to get that up just a little bit. But I want to take a quick look at it. So I'm going to click on here and we're going to edit it. Because there's something that was just really dumb that happened. <laughs> that I thought was dumb. And then somebody very quickly in the comments kind of pointed out pointed out this dumb thing and I think I think for other people so I've been struggling with park count now uh, that's why there's like for instance no nose cones on on these boosters here and stuff like that uh, because I'm at a 40 I'm right at the 40 part limit some people have been telling me too to up the um, launch pad but I'm still building very light rockets these rockets are not very big so nowhere near the mass limit or the size limits but the part limits are getting me and then somebody pointed out in the comments that I have been unlocking longer tanks so these are the Oscar C tanks they are just a bigger version of the Oscar B tank that I think most people are pretty familiar with but I also now have the Oscar D and the Oscar E and I just don't so there you go there's the oscar e same diameter as the oscar b's and all the odds i like that, that there's a whole oscar series here now uh there are 0.625 meter parts but you can see one oscar e is equivalent to four oscar c's so i can dramatically reduce my part count without you know sacrificing anything about the rocket by just doing that and it's like Man, what were what, what what was I thinking about? So for instance, here we there's four right there. Yep, four. So I can get rid of this, replace that with an Oscar E. Put these back on. Make sure the staging is still sensible. I believe it is. Um, I, I'm gonna have to. What is my launch TWR? It is still good. And now I can. Oh my gosh, like miracle of miracles I can put on a nose cone on there so that saved me some parts right there let's move these down a little bit so that all the engine cones are similar on the bottom and same thing here I can go one two three and four I think I got to take off this bottom oops that right one two three four yeah so I'm gonna have to take these off again so I gotta remember that I got bigger tanks and that came about because I took an old tank and simply uh, an old booster from a previous rocket and simply slapped it onto this rock without looking at the fact that I've made some improvements since then oh my gosh what is going on here um, did I lose? I think I lost my my decouplers. So I'll put those back on. This back on. This back on. This should be pretty all the same properties. Whoops. Slide these down. Slide this out a little bit because it kind of jumped in. Okay, make sure the staging is sensible. It is not. <laughs> Those should go there. That should go there. That could go there. That could go there. Still got 4,806 meters per second of delta V. You actually need quite a lot of delta V with really, really light rockets like this because they the drag affects them so badly. So it is a little over the top on the delta V department, but that's not a bad thing. But I think there we go. That's good. So there's my new maps at two. I'm gonna save the edits. It's now down to how many parts? 30 parts. I've got 10 less parts now. <laughs> okay. 
And let's see here. Um, yeah. Oh, and the other thing I want to do is I have been getting pretty tight for cash. I, I do want to start upgrading things, and I'm nowhere. I did upgrade the mission control. I think I did it by accident, but that's okay. But I do want to start getting the cash flowing a little better. So what I think I'm going to do, see if I can pick up some part testing contracts. Before I do that, this is the crash simulator, which I've been using quite a lot. And there is some costs involved associated with running simulations. And I think what I'm going to do is honestly just put all these costs down to zero so I can run my simulations for free. Um... I guess I should leave a multiplier at one. Don't multiply by zero. <laughs> I'm assuming things will go bad if I do that. So I'm going to say accept. Is this a custom? Maybe I have to put this on custom. There we go. Let's put this on custom. Zero, zero, one. And say accept, I guess. I guess. Did that work? I think so. Okay. And then I'm going to go into mission control. We're going to take a look at... Um, look at uh, some part testing contracts. I also added in another contract pack called Exploration Plus, but unfortunately there's a whole stack of contracts here that I'm not gonna be able to get because um, like I've already gone into orbit and I've already, some. so that's annoying, but oh well. Uh, where I'm looking, where I'm looking, where I'm looking. I don't think there's anything here. Yeah. Well, Fly, I want to get maneuver nodes before I attempt to fly by the moon, so that's going to involve some building upgrades. Actually, just a tracking station now, I think about it, but maybe that'll be my next goal. But I'm looking here, part testing. I want to find some cheap. I need some money. I need some money. So let's look at this. This is okay. So test the 1.25. Uh, I'm not that good at launching in a flight over the Earth. Uh, how fast? I only have to get to, uh, oh, what, a pretty high, so I have to build a rocket. I don't have much in the way of 1.25 meter rocket parts. Uh, the Valiant liquid engine splashed down on Earth. That would be easy enough. Just put that on a rocket, put a parachute on it. Let's see if I can do that one. Uh, Rove Max Model S2. Oh, that's pretty big. I, I don't want to do big things. The TD-06 decoupler, that's a 0.625 meter part. Test that landed on Earth. Like, that's dead simple money there. Uh, Mark 16 parachute. So I'm just going to pick the ones that are getting me. So this one. This one. Okay, this one's... It's got to be at a certain altitude and a certain speed. And then i got to test the Mark 16 through... Okay, this one. And let's grab that. And this one. I'm pretty sure I can do that through staging. And this one, I like the fact I can grab up to seven contracts now. So let's see if we can build ourselves a very, very quick rocket. At the bottom of the tank, there are three in a row now. Oh, I mess up with my... The bottom tank, there are three in a row now. So we're talking about this one? I'm not, I'm not sure what that's referring to. It's the thing, there's a lag in the chat, and there's a lag in my brain by the time I sort of notice what's going on in the chat, so I'm not sure what that's in reference to. What what do you mean by three in a row? But maybe the, maybe that's gone now. What mod adds fuel ullage? Um, I think I have... Do I have that? Do, I don't think... No, I don't have to worry about ullage. Um, I don't know. It came with my, uh, on my RP1 series, it came with Realism Overhaul. It's not in this series, so I can't really say off the top of my head. Okay, let's uh, look at contracts. Look at contracts. Look at contracts. So, build something really simple. So, I'm thinking about these two here. The Mark 16 Parachute one and the Test the Valiant Engine one. Uh, let's pop these two aside for now. Don't need to look at those. And see if we can build a rocket that can do those two things. And we'll stick that into the build as well. Uh, so the Valiant engine is that one. So we might as well put it. Where did it go? There we are. Oh, is it? it's a bigger rocket, isn't it? Well, well, we'll see if we can get it to work. It is, but we can make something stupid. <laughs> This is going to be the emphasis on this is going to be something stupid. 
All it needs to be able to do, maybe just something like this. Oh wait, do I test the Valiant splash down and is there a fine print here? I gotta test, to perform the test, activate the part through the staging sequence when all the conditions are met. I think I can shut it down and redo it. I'm gonna find out. I think that'll work. So I'm gonna use it to get there. Um, and also the Mark 16 parachute. So this is the whole plan. Does this, this guy have gimbling? If I go to control here. Yeah, there's a gimbal limit, so there's gimbal control there. <laughs> Put some tail fins on the bottom. I'm sure the thrust is through the roof. For a little bit of stability. I usually kind of avoid these part testing contracts because I find them you end up doing silly things like this but I really 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 need I really need the the uh, I need, need, need the cash is what this is about okay so I'm gonna turn the thrust limiter like way down so I will have some oh I need a probe body on this thing don't I silly Billy the own, oh no, I now have the Probodyne Cube. The Probodobodyne Cube. So we'll stick you on there, you on there, you on there. Uh, that gives me actually SAS compatibility. I'll make the probe body the root part. All right, um, let's see what happens if I just launch this, if I can just make it work. So we're gonna save this as a just a part tester. And save and we're gonna hit the simulate button because with Kerbal construction time it takes some time to build stuff so you want to test it make sure it works before you actually build it and then go for the contract it's either real fuels or real engines that sounds about right Tyler for the uh, ullage issues I don't know the issues it's just something to think about an extra thing but they're not in this this one okay so what I'm looking at is first to test the parachute, oh, the staging is a mess. So we're gonna state, we're gonna stage the rocket, and then when I'm in the right, I'm gonna head over the water, and then when I'm in the right, oh, landed on Earth. Oh, it's the TD-060 coupler. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. I highlighted the wrong one. This is the one I'm interested in. Ah, silly Billy. Let's get the right one going. That one's out of the way. Okay, the t I could probably I could put a decoupler on this too and do that easy enough. But the the haul the Mark 16 parachute to three kilometers at 10 meters per second and at a speed between 20 meters per second and 210 meters per second. So my plan my plan is to get up to the altitude, head east over the water. I'll get in around that speed, activate the parachute, splash down in the water, and see if I can get the engine part of it. So I do have SAS now, Miracle of Miracles, and we're going to launchify, but probably just half throttle, I'm thinking. More throttle. There we go. I don't want to be going too fast. We'll head east. Just get over. So I got I got control. I got control. I gotta stay over, get over three kilometers, but under ten kilometers. More throttle. Oh, and I can always wait for myself to slow down enough. There we go. I don't want to go. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's let's try this again. I, I gotta go up higher. <laughs> uh, where's my go to here? Restart that simulation. Okay, we'll try that again. Gotta get higher before I pitch over. Yeah, I got to start making me some profit. That's exactly right. Okay, so the right idea, but pitched over too soon. So straight, go up. Oh, for goodness sakes. I'm glad these tests aren't costing me anything anymore. <laughs> All right. This one's the one. Third time's the charm. Okay, let's fix that staging right away. Okay, 
throttle up go so this time don't want to be going too fast Shoot, I lost where my ah poop I got it in the wrong that's the one I want to see okay Throttle down. Oh, now I got almost no control. I'm pitching hard eastward. <laughs> this is the worst. Okay, this is not as easy a thing because I was fiddling. Oh my god. Okay. The fourth time's a charm. I was fiddling with my contracts and not looking at my rocket. Yeah, I've changed it so testing is free because I'm really tight on cash. And you know what's another thing too I could do? if I was, Because this is the thing, when you start mucking about with mods and tech trees and all that kind of stuff, there's absolutely no guarantee that what you end up producing is something that's at all balanced. And so I might, if money continues to be really tight, simply... Um, this time I want to go straight up so pay attention to what you're doing um, if money gets really tight simply boost the cash rewards for the contracts I do have I, I, I feel somewhat justified in doing that okay I want to get up I got to get over three kilometers that's what I got to remember so now I'm doing I think a lot more of a sane ascent there's not a lot of control here okay now I need to come Oh, well, once this thing starts picking up speed, it does not want to turn. Okay, so that's my parachute, but I got my parachute. Oh, all I got to do is haul it. Oh, for goodness sakes. I'm so I thought I had to stage the parachute up here. So let's just get some eastitude on this. Oh, we're out of... I don't... We're not making it to the water. Okay. Oh dear, okay. Last try. And although this isn't costing me money, it is costing me valuable stream time. SAS is off. Was it? Probably. Probably. I'm not used to having SAS and being able to turn it on. Okay. Fix your staging. Back to that contract. Mark parachute. Okay, SAS on. Throttle up. Go. So I need I'm not enough east to tude. So this time I gotta remember all I gotta do is get to that speed. I don't I was thinking I had to be staging the parachute at that point. Okay, a little bit more eastwardness. A little bit more eastwardness. Yeah, once it starts going up, it wants to keep going up. So I'm reducing my throttle. So I don't want to be going too fast. I'm hard over to the east. Okay, so I got the haul the parachute business. Now I just need more eastwardness. Of course, I could build just a bigger rocket. That might not be a... Maybe that's the thing. Just put another tank on this. Do I got enough to make it over there now? I don't think so. Okay. Well, I'm I'm done with the. T I'm I'm. You know what I'm gonna do? Here we go. <laughs> Terminate the simulation. Yeah, I try to launch it at a bit of an angle. Um, I don't have launch clamps. So if I put it in the... At least I don't think I have launch clamps. Because that would be what I would do. Actually, here. Let's put on the TD-060 coupler. Because that's one of the contracts I want to. Put that right on the bottom. Because this says test the TD-060 coupler while landed on Kerbin. So there is the TD-060 coupler. Take the shroud off because it looks ridiculous. There's that. Boink. There we go. So that is going to get staged with the engine. Save. Um, I might. What do I have for... See, th this real... Like, 
yeah, I'm going to stop complaining about the tech tree, but like, really, why? Why is there these my only structural bits? It's just dumb. Like, I'm wondering if can I build some sort of little launch platform? I don't know. No, no, no more, no more, no more. Just do it. We're going to deal with this. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, build this. So, how do we do this again? Oh, yeah, we go to here. I don't care about putting in the plans, but... No, I think all I gotta do is hit this. There it goes. It's in there now. Yep. Okay. And we'll do MapSat 2, and then we'll do the part testing. Let's leave. Let's leave. Yeah, and that's one of the things with the tech tree, Tyler's talking, like, the structural parts, I love getting little structural parts, things like the cubic octagonal strut and stuff like that. Those are great parts to get early on, and uh, this tech tree does not give them to you. So, what I'm going to do, we're going to hide all these contracts, we're going to go to... I do like having multiple contracts going now. The multi-spectral one, that is our next one we're going to go to. So th that is what this rocket is all about. And I'm just looking at my little list of things to make sure I did everything I wanted to do leading up to that. I think I did. So let's just simply warp to the completion of that. Oh, no, I know what I wanted to do. <laughs> I'll do it after this launch. Oh, why, what, what, why is the time warping stopping? What's going on? What's going on? It's stopping, it's stopping, and it's saying... Map sat to... Oh, complete! Oh, I gave myself... What? What is this? I don't know what that is. We should watch also this contract here. So my low res altimetry scan. Oh, no, it's... Why is that percentage not going up? It stopped at 14%. Oh, dear. That's not encouraging. This uh, low-res altimetry scan is no longer working. That is... Not that, sorry. That is this. It is... Oh, I'll investigate that later. Maybe I'm a little bit borked with this whole idea. Uh, let's go to Sunrise. Oh boy, I might be borked with these whole lunch. I might be in trouble with these. Is it flying over the areas it scanned before? Um, that's possible. That's possible, though kind of unlikely. Alright, so here is our rocket for the maps at two we'll investigate it in just a little bit i need to get this just in a polar orbit we're going to go for a hundred kilometer orbit i have a little i do have kos installed and it's giving me instructions on what to do which is to run my orbit program with the parameters 185 which is a heading so it's going to go off at an at a 185 degree heading that's a little west of south and it's going to cut throttle when the apoapsis gets to a hundred thousand meters. So that's what that means. So off it goes and hopefully everything is ready and able to go. Yep, I always like, this was a week ago of course that I built this thing and then <laughs> I'm like, I think it's okay. I believe I have to stage manually. That's the one thing. And the reason why we're heading towards the south here see it tilting towards that way is um, because uh, we're gonna go for a polar orbit I can get words out it's very likely battery issues no mercy that's the first thought that came to me um, our battery issues I I have no means of maintaining attitude control 
I don't have RCS unlocked yet, I don't have reaction wheels unlocked yet, so once the probe is in orbit, it's just going to tumble. And although I do have solar panels on it, just give me a sec. There we go. Uh, I'll do, I, I'll, although I do have solar panels on it, it, uh, it, uh, may, they may not be oriented very well. That's in very, very likely. But I am going to go investigate and see what's going on. Mapsat 1. No, no, Mapsat 1's not... That's not my one. Mapsat 2 is my satellite in question. Okay. And again, this is going to go until an altitude of... Hopefully it all holds together. <laughs> that looks better there. So we're heading to an apoapsis of 100, I believe. And it's not the most sophisticated launch program in the world. I'll try and see if I can keep working on it and make it a little bit more better. For instance, right now it really should be kind of reducing this throttle a little bit, but it's not. Okay, and again, you can see, that's not bad. Like, we can see where that uh, orbital prograde vector is. It's pretty close to being right on the south line, which does tell me I'm very close to being in a polar orbit. Take a look here. There is my MAPSAT-1. We'll investigate you in a little bit. Here comes my, my other guy. Here's where you can see this is Earth. Like, there's South America. But anyway... Uh, I'll let this get a little higher. We'll pop the fairing. Wait till we're pretty much out, out of the atmosphere for that. Okay, let's do it. So five. There we go. That worked. I should also have an antenna on here somewhere. There it goes. And this is the actual scanner on the top. And you can see here it's got, I'm pretty, because I was, at the time had part count issues. I only put on two solar panels. I wish now I put on more, but I didn't. So that's that. I do have SAS, which is awesome. So that should really, oh, and I, but I have no attitude control other than thrust vectoring. So I can't steer until I'm actually uh, got some throttle on this. So I'm just gonna wait until we're closer to apoapsis. Still a lot of DV left. Holy cannoli. Okay. And, oh, did I turn... I don't even know if I turned down the ejection force on this. I can't remember. I can't remember where I ended this at. So, anyway, I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle. So I can steer. And now I'm going to give it a lot more throttle. But, oh my... I, I, this thing is way overbuilt. Why did I build this so crazy? Like, I might be able to do all of this just on this stage. Forget the probe entirely. That is kind of wild. Here, more throttle. Okay, I'm just going to stage... And then we'll throttle up on those engines. I only did that because I wanted that thing to de to deorbit, right? I'm gonna let get a little bit closer to Apple Apps. But we are tumbling, unfortunately. Sort of steer it back. I don't want my Apple Apps just to get too big. It was getting ahead of me. So yeah, I staged that even though it still had quite a bit of fuel in it, only because I wanted it to deorbit. We'll let this get a little closer to Apoapsis. Again, a little staging that way. <laughs> Just trying to keep it around the prograde vector. Now I time warped. Did it freeze? It shouldn't. I thought I had persistent rotation installed. Oopsie doodle. Yeah, time warping freezes the rotation. Okay, there's something 
Something's changed. Because that didn't happen last week. And previously. I don't know. Okay. What is my... I've got four hours of electricity right now. A little bit lower. It's nice now I don't have to worry about losing connections. That was always my issue before because I was fighting with that other mod. But now I should be picking up ground stations and not have to worry about that stuff. Okay, let's... Uh... Okay, just pushing up that periapsis so that this thing's kind of close to being a circle. Roll it a little bit. That's close enough. Okay, so let's get into here. We'll turn on our multi-spectral analyzer, which is that guy. I don't think there's any animation with it. But I can see if I can get a little bit of solar. Whoops. Just trying to get it. Unfortunately, again, I have to give it some thrust in order to just trying to get a little bit better here just let it tumble and hopefully it's you know the solar panels will expose every once in a while and but I think I think the other ones are so there that's all this is so again this thing is gonna start scanning this is done but I'm worried it's gonna run into the same fate as the other one uh, I should now be able to have a biome map. So you can see it's starting to scan the biome. It's telling me I'm right now over the ocean, which I uh, kind of knew that. But I don't know. We'll see how it does. Let's go over to MapSat 1. One thing that uh, Kerbalism does for you is it, it allows you to monitor different probes from here, which is really nice. But you can, if you click here, actually go to the vessel rather than going into map view and searching for it and all that kind of stuff, which is nice. Yeah, it's not just SAS. I have SAS now, uh, Salam, but I don't have reaction wheels and I don't have RCS. Those are the things I'm kind of missing. So this is my probe. Um... Can I start this? Okay, this is enabled now. So this this the uh, scan sat was was out. Now what I can do, there's four minutes of electricity. Let's um let's get into the automations here. So if I go to the scan sat, if power is low, so EC levels are below 20%, I want you to turn off the scan sat and if power levels are high above that I want you to turn it on so this is some automation that you can add into that that wasn't there before and so now uh, this should be off if I'm not mistaken Go back here to devices whoops oh it is enabled okay let's turn it off but Where's my electricity? Oh, the electricity's okay. Okay, okay. So let's... Uh, sorry, my mistake. But now what should be happening is... And somebody suggested this last stream, and by the time I realized it, it was out of juice. So... Um, this should now, when the power gets too low, so when the uh, electric charge gets below 20%, it should turn off the ScanSat scanner... And then when it gets back up above 80%, it should turn it back on. And I can, this is what's great, I can set up MapSat 2 with the exact same setup and do it right from here. So when the power is low, we're going to turn off the ScanSat scanner. And when the power is back high, we're going to turn on the ScanSat scanner. And right now, I just want to make sure it is indeed on. It is so I can see here it's doing some scanning. It's done to 1%. And where's my other contract? Low altitude. I'm hoping this one is scanning once again. Where's my scanner scanner? Da-da-da-da-da. Oh, down here. 
Where's the map? Because I'd love to have me a biome map. So there's the beginnings of my biome map. But if I go to the altimetry map. Uh, there's the probe. I'm hoping it's scanning again. Let's see if it's coming back down. See, now it's scanning, right? Maybe? I don't know. It doesn't look like it's scanning. Oh, it's disabled. Did the electric charge get too low? It did. I think this thing's going to be turning itself on and off all the time. I think I'm just going to leave it. And hopefully we'll see these percentages slowly go up. It is what it is. Okay. Uh... Actually, time warping this one, it tumbles. Isn't that interesting? Maybe it's because I had the S... I don't know. Very weird. Okay. Let's get back to Space Center. <laughs> Communication seems to be an issue. Oh, I wasn't looking at that. I wasn't looking at that. Well, what we'll do... Yeah, the, the, it, there, it should have more batteries. It should have more solar panels. But I put on only a couple of batteries and a couple of solar panels because I was concerned about parts. Turned out I shouldn't have been concerned about parts. But I happen to be kind of an idiot. so <laughs> Or part count, really. So that's why they're as sketchy as they are. But let's hope that they'll be getting better. So get this. Delete those. Okay. Other thing I wanted to do is I do have my little plane. I'm going to launch this one. We're going to put Jebediah in, sure. And we're going to collect some more science. I want to collect some more science. Oh, so persistent rotation is enabled. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I just don't understand why the tumbling was stopping when I was time warping before with the maps at 2. It was a little weird. All right, uh, why are you like that? There we go. So this is my little plane, the Juno 2, and no contracts. But what I want to do, come here, is I want to collect me some science. And I've collected all kinds of science. I can show it to you here. Where's the di this guy? So for instance, if I take a look at, let's just say, for instance, the crew report. Should pop up maybe crew report um i've done some oh there's only a flying low crew report what else do i got on this thing uh temperature scan maybe well now i'm a little bit worried okay i can do some temperature scanning over the ocean i got 1.2 science there uh there's some shores there's some tropics this is why i want to find out where these biomes are uh but what i think i'm just going to do is just same with radiation scan Yep, see, I got it over flying. Oh, but that's just flying. Okay, well, let's just fly over the water and see what we find. I guess that's that. Maybe this won't be as much science as I was hoping. So uh, throttle up and engage this. Oh, brakes off would be a good idea. So this might not be as much, as much uh, science as I was hoping for. But we'll get over the ocean and we'll see what turns on. So this might not be a very long... Oh, we do have pressure scanning. I think pressure... Sc we'll see. Let's see what we get. Oh, I should... Uh, I'm not even using... Although this thing flies pretty good. I do have the atmosphere autopilot mod, which is really nice. It makes the, all the smooth... Like if I, For those people not familiar with this mod, right now I have the standard fly-by-wire turned on, which means it'll try and it's best to maintain the current heading and attitude so pitch and all that kind of stuff um you don't get that kind of dipping that you get with you know it just kind of stays on course like where you point it is where it wants to go okay let's see we are running a pressure scan and a temperature scan okay so this is going to take about 15 minutes and that's about it so we're going to get well about two science there about 6.3 science there so a little bit more science. Let's uh, calm down here with our throttle. So we'll just fly out this way. Here, let's actually get this going. So this is the autopilot or cruise control 
component of this. So you can set, for instance, a particular speed you want. So let's say I want to stay at around, oh, let's say 180 meters per second. I can pick myself a heading. Let's keep it at around, I'm at 94 degrees now. No reason to change that. Uh, I can pick myself an altitude. Let's say three kilometers, seems to be almost there. And then I can activate that and then activate that cruise controller. And there it goes, it's off doing its thing. And now I can just safely put on time warp until all our science is collected. So our temperature scan is collected. I do like with Kerbalism, I do love this science. Uh, I, this is so much better than the whole right clicking on stuff and and all of that it's uh, that it's just done in the background you can collect a hundred percent of it no little bits of it left behind it's just a much better system also I have waypoint manager I can put a waypoint on the runway when I'm ready to head back home Fortunately, the pressure scan takes a little bit. And I'm not going to do a lot. I mean, I could find out. I don't know where the tropics are. It seems like I got a little bit of tropics. I'm just noticing that. Like, okay, there's the forest. But one of these, I remember seeing some tropics. Was it the temperature? Yeah, I see a little smidge of tropics. So at some point I was over the tropics. And then there's shores. Uh, about 40% of the shore science. Yeah. Go a little bit more, then we'll turn around and head back. So actually, one thing I can show you right now, this is something that actually got pointed to me, pointed out to me on my RP1 series where I use this same mod, is if you go into craft settings, you can set, and this is craft specific, it gets saved for the particular craft, where you can set, um, uh, like for instance here, moderate G, these are the G forces on the plane, right now it will not let the G forces exceed 15 Gs. Now in KSP, these planes are ridiculously durable, so that's actually not too big a deal. But in realism overhaul, it actually is a big deal, and you'll have planes that will break apart quite readily at, at, if they pull those kind of Gs. And you can set this down, and then you can say save it, and it actually saves it for that plane. And I, I think that's great. And you can say, you know, what's going to be your maximum angle of attack, and what's your maximum side slip and side Gs. Pretty neat. So that's, that's a neat thing I just discovered just this week. And another neat thing I just discovered this week is uh, down here, the thrust controller GUI. There's a PID. Now, again, in stock, it's not as big a deal. But on some of the engines in realism overall, you get some throttle oscillations when it's in a situation like this. And you can put on the use the PID, and uh, that will actually tend to take away a lot of those oscillations. So a lot of neat features. There's a lot more in there I've yet to even discover. All right, so we're going to turn back towards the uh, runway. And then we'll time warp away the rest of this uh, atmospheric pressure scan. Just southeast of the Cape is the tropics. Okay. Good to know. So if I get into my map view... And take a look here. So we're talking southeast. So down, I guess we're looking over the Everglades. I guess that kind of makes sense. Is tropics. Okay, let's, uh, maybe maybe we'll take a look-see down that way too. I'd love to see if I can get some more, some more science. Southern Florida, yeah. That, that should have been my guess too. <laughs> getting over some swamps. Getting over some swamps. And I could do some landing and collect some more science, but I have a distinct distrust for these little types of landing legs. I tend not to land 
anywhere but on the runway until I have those deployable landing legs. So I'm going to avoid putting this down on any terrain other than on the runway just until this is better. Okay, uh, yeah, we're at full time warp. Oh, nope, we're still running the... We're still running that. Heading on back. Well, welcome, Keith. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you can make it. A week into KSP one, and well, oh, that's good. That's excellent. There is definitely a steep learning curve to this game. There is no doubt about it. Okay, so I'm going to adjust my heading a little bit towards the south. So right now we're heading at. 94 degrees south is like adding in. Let's go try 135. So that's going so we can get see if we can get some of those tropics over there. I don't know what I'm doing. 225. <laughs> going back. There we go. That's better. Maybe in a little bit more, 240 maybe. Alright. We are done with our scanning over the oceans. And now let's see if we can get some of those some of those tropics. Hello there, Branimir. We are... Oh, we just transmitted some stuff. We've transmitted everything now. We are trying to see if we're going to get some tropics science here. So we're coming over the Florida Everglades is the plan. I'm supposing this bit of patchwork here is meant to be Miami. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we get. So I might just uh, take control here a little bit. Put it back on standard fly-by-wire. All right, are we getting anything? Not seeing anything yet. Do I got to get right over the southern tip or something? Not going to spend too much time with this. Oh, we're getting something here. Oh, this is flying low shores. Okay. I wasn't looking for that, but maybe if I just hung around here. Oh, I just lost it again. Had shores there for a little bit. This is where a map really helps because you can just whatever little bit of shores I had, I seems to have lost it. Okay, so what we'll do? Let's just get over a little more throttle. Okay, here we got something again. Shores again. Let's see if we can just... doesn't feel like I'm over the shores, but I'll take it. Oh, lost it again. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can find... It's a very small area I need to go back and forth through. Oh, is it a real pain then, the tropics? Could be. And seeing it's a little sketchier looking up this way. Maybe those are meant to be... Oh, wait a sec. There's a change in texture coming up here. I think, I think, I think we might be... Is it just my imagination or does it look like the texture's about to change?
Let's see. All right, I don't know. <laughs> I was almost convinced. Let's just, I'm just heading back to the runway. Getting back to the runway. We got a little bit of science. How much science did we get? It'll tell us here. 8.8 .8 science. It's not enough for another node, but it is what it is. And I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Like, I don't know what people think about it. And I'm not saying I'm going to do this. Let's, let's maybe have a conversation about this. But um, if this ends up being something where you sort of get yourself, you're kind of cash strapped and you're science locked and you're finding it hard to progress. And I'm going, yeah, that was a bad choice for the tech tree or a bad choice with the, pa the group of contracts. But the only way to fix it is to restart. Would people be open to that? I'm kind of curious. I'm not saying I'm going to do it because I kind of really do want to kind of keep going through this. I hate starting something and then saying, ah, oh, this isn't going to work. I'm going to do it again. But if they came to that, would that be something that people would be not too upset about and just say, you know what, let's try it with a different group of mods and just start over again? Not at that point yet, but if that point comes. And, uh, you know, you can let me know in the chat or you can let me know in the comments. Uh, if you're watching this at a later time. Alright, let's get this on the runway. I did not quick save at any point along this. Which is usually a little dangerous. But I think I'm okay. Nice and slow. You never can tell with this runway and those landing gear. Yeah, see what I mean? Uh oh! See what I mean? Is Jeb dead? I think Jeb's dead. I'm gonna go with it. Like, I don't know. I don't think I did anything wrong, but I don't think I quick saved once, and I'm not gonna restart. Oh, with, no, he didn't. No, we got the science, because I think all that science got transmitted. I'm just gonna call it. I'm going to say, sorry, Jeb's dead. You can say how much I care. Usually I get very upset about those kind of things, but <laughs> I'm just going, what? What was that? Like, it was like, I just, just really, I then not like, no, nope, no, nope, I think I'm going to blow up. I think my landing gear are just going to disappear. I love uncurbled start. I do agree. But the problem is, is going to uncurbled start really would mean a complete restart of this. Um... And so that would be a bit of an issue. And the one thing I did find when I was playing Uncurbled Start on my own, trying to catch up to where I am here, I wasn't running into the same money issues. I'm not exactly sure why, but I wasn't. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, so I'd love to upgrade the tech track. I'm going to upgrade the tracking station. Because if I upgrade the tracking station, that's going to give me the ability for maneuver nodes and I might even consider consider like flying by the moon or something like that so I'm gonna start the process of upgrading the tracking station now that takes time it's gonna take 13 days for that to happen uh, in the meantime our launch pad is being reconditioned we did lose our plane and all of that our part testing rocket is being built so why don't we time warp to the completion of all that stuff yeah, I do have to start a new Juno. You're right. You are correct. If I go to plans, I got a new Juno. Oh, I never did. Okay, I didn't go to plan. Okay, I got to go to here. I never put it in the plans. Yeah, I know those fixed landing gear are ridiculous. They really are. And sometimes I think devs do that kind of stuff on purpose. I think th I think they want us to suffer. <laughs> I think they like explosions. And I think some people do, but I don't know. Anyway, um, I should have added this to the plans. That's always a good idea. So this is how you add it to the plans. You just push that, and now I can build it. So we'll get another Juno 2 being built. Still got Val. Then we are going to be... Uh... 
That's our only pilot left. All right, uh, let's time warp. I don't know what... Oh, batteries are almost empty on that. Oh, relax, batteries are charging. So that's the turning on and off thing. So that's working. Notice it said uh, maps at two, batteries are almost dead. And then it said maps at two, batteries are recharging. Now, by the way, you can turn off those notifications if you go to config I think yes and say stop giving me battery warnings I don't care because it's getting on my nerves you can turn them off which is good uh, where are we at where are we at part testing rocket no more electric charge on maps at one okay so put on maps at one say stop bugging me about batteries for that one too because it annoys me Well, broken landing gear doesn't directly blow up a plane, <laughs> but it does lead to a plane blowing up. It's, a, you know, if you're going at some speed and the landing gear decides it's not going to be there for you anymore, that usually spells a, a big problem. Uh, VAB, let's see, rolling out. Boom. All right, so we're going to launch this guy. So this one, we got a few contracts associated with this. Just uh, get this up here. So this is the part tester. And we'll get our contracts. And we have these three. Now what's discouraging is I actually haven't done any of these three <laughs> testing. So I might give myself some permission. But there's ship. Yeah, there's a decoupler down there. So as soon as I stage... That should be testing the decoupler while landed on the Earth. And then I got my Valiant engine, which I want to test splash down. So the key here is to get over to the water. So uh, that's what I was having some issues with. But let's see how this goes. So yeah, just punch it. Go. Off we go. So there, that's that contract. We got one contract at least completed. And I want to try... I've not been going east enough, but I do have to get to three kilometers. Oh, I meant to put another... I should have put more fuel on this. I remember saying to myself, you know what this needs? It needs more fuel. But did I put more fuel on it? No, I did not put more fuel on it. Okay, I'm just reducing throttle because I don't want to be going too fast. I can't go over 210 meters per second. Let's keep going, keep going. Pitch over, hard over, hard over, hard over, hard over. Hard over, hard over. Okay, so we've got that two contracts down. Now, the big thing is, can I make it to the water? Okay, we are out of fuel. Am I going to make it to the water? This thing nosedives pretty, 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 pretty quickly. I have no attitude. Why am I fiddling with the attitude controls? I have no attitude controls. So the whole question is, can I make it to the water? Can I make it to the water? It's going to be so close. <laughs> I should have put more fuel on this. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm really putting off deploying the parachute. Because I want to try and get as much eastward as I can. But I'm going to have to do it at some point, aren't I? I don't know if this is going to count as splashdown. Oh, we're going so fast. Okay, there we go. Hopefully this will count as splashdown. Sometimes you can be too close to the shore and it says, nah, but I think this should count as splashdown. I think I'm just, just making it. Okay, and then the other thing I got to do, I think I need to shut down this engine and then restage it again. Oh, there is a run test option. Okay, let's try this. Put this here. Okay, we're down. Okay, and we're splashed down. That's green. So let's click on the engine and just say run test. Is that going to work for me? It does. See, so forget about the doing it through the staging and, and the whole run test. There we go. Three contracts. Boom, boom, and boom. 
I'm happy with that. Uh, contract window goes. We will recover this vessel. Normal recovery. All right. You don't think I could stage without fuel? Okay. Well, whatever. It worked anyway. I didn't even stage. I just said run the test. Okie dokie. So let's see here. Um, recover. What's Oh, that's a decoupler that's down there. Of course. That makes sense. Okay, so a little bit of cash from that. We can delete all those messages. Let's see what other contracts we got. Because I do have a contract. Start exploring the moon. And it's just fly by the moon. So that's from Exploration Plus. I think I also have that with uh, KSRSS. It has its own batch of contracts. Fly by the moon right here. Yeah, just fly by the moon is the only requirements. Uncrewed vessel. Might just go for that. Now, one thing. Oh, wait. Shoot, I just realized something. Is I don't know what the Delta V is to get to the moon because it's not the same moon, right? Like, here's the moon here. Uh, and in the stock game, the moon is 12 thousand kilometers away and here it's like 34 and a half thousand kilometers which is one tenth of what it is in real life and of course it's on this jaunty angle so i gotta figure out i was just about to come here and put a maneuver node but i can't do that yet so maybe i don't know uh let's see let's see let me think Where am I as far as this tech? This tech is eight days away. Well, let's do some more park testing maybe in the meantime. That's the problem is I don't see a lot of other contracts to do. There's this put up relay around the moon. I'm nowhere near doing that. Send a Kerbal up. Well, send a Kerbal. Oh, achieve an orbit with a Kerbal? God, come on. That's another being orbit for six days. There's a bunch of part testing. I do have some of these satellite ones. Maybe reaching one of these specific orbits is not a terrible idea. Especially if I can do that. Ooh, some big money. Some big money. Maybe pick the easier of these two. Inclination. I don't... <laughs> this is the... I actually should take a look at them. One's inclined at two degrees, but that's not great because I'm not launching from the equator, so that's not going to make my life easier. Okay, let's take a look at them. The one that's closest to the actual plane, I think the higher inclination one would probably be higher, easier. Despite the fact that the altitude is more. So I have this one. Here. But that will require a plane change. And then I think I'm going to go for this big inclined one. Why not? See what, if, see what happens. I mean, I had a ton of Delta V. You might not want to do a manned flight with my one pilot, yeah. Um, if I get into here... Problem is, I don't know what the Delta V cost is to get out to that orbit. Um, I could get out my spreadsheet, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I have a spreadsheet for that, but what I'm going to do, this is, yeah. This is my best rocket to date, MapSat 2. Oh, that's just, that has to do with the Constellation mod. That's not a big deal. How much science do I have, by the way? Did I, I didn't, I don't think I have enough for a node. So, let's just delete this fairing for now. So it's got this little guy on the top, which is a thousand meters per second. Oh, jeez. What if I just took this... How much is this throttled down? Fair amount.
I'm just gonna put that on there and just kind of see how far this will go. That's kind of just my whole idea. It's not very sophisticated. Get some more thrust on here, but I think I should be able to... Oh yeah, I got enough to get this to go up. And... More thrust on this one. It's just the old seal high shield go. That guy's at full thrust. Take the map sat thing off. Let's um... What kind of communications... I have no idea. Well, that's the only antenna I got. It's the computer. So whether I'll have the communications or not, I don't know. But what I'm going to do is I am going to put solar panels all around this. And more batteries. A solar panel on top. <laughs> so I'm hoping I guess this is the uh, QBE1 is what I'm going to call it so let's see how far this goes that's really my, my, my entire plan it, it isn't uh, it isn't much to speak of so let's build the fairing we've got to get out past these batteries that and then up like so and then close that off like so let's just see what it does so we're gonna save this and we're going to simulate it oh whoa 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 what 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 am I oh I do have I'm over the park count I'm over part counts. I'm over part counts. Okay. Um, by four. Well, I put on a lot. Let's let's just. I'll take off this top ba uh, solar panel, and we'll go with just four batteries, maybe. Still one too many. Let's take off one fuel can off the bottom here. That. That. Let's see what happens. And simulate. Shove the batteries inside. You, oh, like, uh, yeah, I could. Like, translate them inside. But some people get upset about that. Because they're like, there's fuel in there. And they don't like the, putting the parts together like that. <laughs> so I'm sort of hesitant sometimes. Because I get grief. When you start doing a lot of part clipping, if it was an empty tank, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't hesitate. But anyway, um, I'm gonna run my orbit program. So run orbit, robot, <laughs> orbit. Uh, we're gonna go into a 90 degree heading, and I'm just gonna go for an 80 kilometer orbit, and we'll see what this does. And this is all about, can it get up to the kind of altitude that I saw with that one contract that I never have accepted yet. Let's see what she can do. Because when I put up that MapSat 2, it had a lot. It had a lot of uh, extra DV. Alright, so boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I think this is all set up straight. So that should be good. Oh, and boosters, next stage. Off you go. I do like this little rocket. And it's it's deceptive because you got to remind yourself, this is made out of nothing but .625 meter parts. Like compared to what you build typically in a stock game, this is really small. It's not a very big rocket.
watching these cloud layers going down and it's sort of funny um, I used to think that used to look pretty fake when you see like a layer of clouds kind of coming past like you go through a layer of clouds and then I watched the um, this uh, as I'm sure many of you did the uh, the um, starship launch the other week and gosh when it was going through the the clouds it did not look a lot like ASP with like a layer of clouds all right here we go that's okay that's 80 the program has ended And according to this, see, I, I think this lies. This number's not consistent. Very weird. Very weird. Okay. Can lose that fairing. Deploy the antenna. Not much to look at, I will admit to that. Okay, start up that throttle, point down to the horizon. Oh, SAS on. Got SAS now. Need to pitch up a little bit. I think I'm getting pretty close to my apple apsis here. I don't like I don't like passing my apple apsis when I'm doing this. I'd rather push my pap apple apsis up a little bit. Let's pitch down again. Okay, so now I'm just gonna hold it on prograde. We've got our orbit. I'm just gonna hold it on prograde and this to see what kind of altitude this comes out to be. So I remember seeing something here. Let's cut. Uh, I can't see them unfortunately anymore. But there was an orbit. I don't know. It was around 3,500. I think it was. Of course, I. Oh, I can see it here. I think that's around the right al altitude. It's the antenna situation on this. Average solar panel exposure is only 13%. Where's the sun? Well, that's not a good spot. Do that. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, unfortunately, this is just, again, just going to keep tumbling. See, I think I have more Delta V than this, because I think there's more in this stage than what this is saying. You think the stock Delta V is totally busted? It could be. Like, this This number is not consistent. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I, it's something that really bugs me when those kind of tools just don't work well, because I kind of depend on them quite a lot. Uh, I could put an engineer chip on this. That might not be a bad idea. And then I can have Kerbal Engineer providing me all that information. You know what I think I'm going to do? Let's end the simulation. I think I'm going to build this thing. I'm going to see if I can get that orbit that they're talking about. Because I has to do something. So, where's my engineer chip? Maybe I'll... Oh, don't tell me I don't have that unlocked yet. How can I not have the engineer chip unlocked? Ah, that's frustrating. Okay. Well, I should put some science on this. At the very least, it can do some sciencing for me. I do have the Geiger counter. Here, let's... Uh, Configure this. Configure unmanned experiments. We have a telemetry report. We have a two-hot thermometer. Let's get both of those going. And we have a Geiger counter. 
So we'll stick this on the top. This is going to require me to remove a part, unfortunately, but life is like that sometimes. At the very least, it's going to collect some science for me. Now I'm over, again, I'm by one part. What part can I least, can I most afford to get rid of? <laughs> Maybe, again... Take off one more of these. There we go. Okay, I'm going to push you into the plants. We're going to see what I get. At the very least, it's going to... Uh... Oh, it's a science part, the Kerbal Engineer chip. Okay. I don't know if I want to give rid of one more part, though. Now that I've put on... I like the Geiger counter better. Because at the very least, it can collect me some science. Okay, I'm at 15.6 science. I don't think that gets me anything, right? I need at least 20. Okay. Uh, then, what, 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 what? Go into here. Go to here. That QB is being built. Oh, I want to go over to here and pick up that contract. And I think it's this two-star one. Yeah, 4,000 kilometers. Okay, so we're going to grab that. We're going to see if we can do that. This is going to be done with a hope and a prayer. Okay, going to here, going to here, going to here. And reconditioning the launch pad. Yeah, I could go to three-way symmetry on the fins. That's a good point. But I was looking at that. Why did this stop? Go. And uh, the reason I didn't do that... Oh my gosh, that's fast. Where's my tech at? Wow, that's already built. Okay. That got built super quick. I guess because it's so close to... Okay, let's uh, warp to sunrise. I guess it got built so quickly only because it's so close to what the maps at 2 was like. It's using a lot of the same parts. Okay, so we're going to launch. Can I collect science around the KSC? No, Mr. McSee says. Can I collect science around the KSC? No, Kerbalism takes that all away. So Kerbalism does make the science collecting, but Kerbalism is designed to be done with the stock game. Um, like the, sorry, the stock, the, the stock Kerbin. And so I think that's what's getting me into some trouble is, um, you know, but no, there is no science at the launch pad and all that kind of stuff. That stuff's all gone. Okay, I'm going to get you. Now I want to keep an eye. Oh, electric charge is perpetual right now. That's interesting sitting on the ground okay because if i'm gonna go for this target orbit i want to this isn't retrograde or anything no i want to let's focus our view on the earth i want to have my launch site be right but looks like i just missed it i think i might just go for it but i can see i need to go south i'm really gonna guess it where i need to go Oh, uh, doo, 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 doo. well, if my electricity is perpetual, I should warp to the other side. I think it'd be better. I want to launch when the KSC is below this orbit. Where is the K? Oh, there it is. It's going to be a night launch. And I got to guess that. And <laughs> this is based on zero math because the math for this is, I think, pretty complicated. Um, what should I? Because when I normally launch, I'll be at an inclination of about 28 degrees. This has an inclination of something like 30 something degrees. So I don't know. Um, let's try 20 degrees north of east. Let's see what that gets me. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So I want to launch right about there. Okay, let's do this. Night launch, night launch. So I'm going to launch. I'm going to run my orbit program. 
and we're going to go uh, 20 degrees north of east. North of east, that'd be 70 degrees. This is so shooting in the dark. 80 kilometer orbit. Go. <laughs> and let's get up this. And we'll probably put this in streaming mode. I'm hoping people can see a little better because it's... Ah! I know these dark nights are not the bestest. Hopefully that's hopefully that's visible for people. Where's my contract? Reach the designated orbit. What was oh it probably tells me the inclination was 34 degrees. Oh I have to have a mystery goo on the satellite. <laughs> Going too quick and I didn't notice this part. Ah! that uh, has to have a mystery goo aboard. So this is going to be useless. Oh well. We're going to do it anyway. At least it's going to collect us some science. I always get caught by that kind of stuff. And this is my first time launching from, you know, trying to get into a specific inclination from, an orb, uh, from a launch site that's not on the equator. So I'm, this is really kind of an exercise for me. Yeah, the fine print gets me again, as it always does. Alright, punch. Stay at... Oh, it looked a little scary there for a second. Alright. Where are we? Oh no, I'm not. I haven't gone north enough. I can see that. I can see that. Need to go more north. You can see my orbit here, and that's my target. Maybe another 20 degrees north. Oh well, it's not going to satisfy the contract anyway. I might as well get rid of this. Five. There we go. And get ready to circularize. So, oh, I got SAS. Don't forget you got SAS. I'm still going to go for a high orbit because, I mean, I might as well. And we'll see what kind of science we can get. I've kind of exhausted the low orbit science. But we can get ourselves into high space and do some stuff with that. I don't know why I'm pulling it over that way. I was looking at the inclination going, oh, I need more inclination. No, I don't, because I'm not trying to match that orbit anymore. Stop being a doofus. So I'm going to push this out about 4,000 kilometers. We're going to go for that. So kind of a proof of concept that I'm going to get into the right ballpark anyway. Pretty close. Okay. This is done, this is done, this is done, so... It's not terrible, really. Not great, but not terrible. Remember, I don't have any maneuver node. Now, let's get out in the sunshine and hopefully collect ourselves some science. There is no Minmus. Nope. Minmus is not. It's just uh, our own solar system. Just shrunk down to Kerbin size. Which I like the idea of. Oh, you know what? I think I got some pretty decent exposure on these solar panels. Am I not mistaken? I think I do. My electric charge is perpetual. I'm just I'm not touching anything. Um I think it's I think that's looking pretty good now. Get ourselves into high space. We should be starting to see some sciencey stuff. 
So I think that's still nine two hundred fifty. Nope. I also have radiation belts. Let's take a look at our radiation. So these are our radiation belts. I've collected all the science that there is in the inner belt, but the outer belt, am I going to be... Ah, my inclined orbit's going to mess me up, isn't it? I do have some bits in the outer belt. Well, let's see what happens. So still no science. This whole thing was just about getting some science, and now I don't even know if I'm going to be getting any science. So I'm coming out here. This is the outer belt, this zone. There we go. So we're getting some nice radiation science. There's only four to collect, unfortunately. My signal's still strong. So that's good. And then once I'm out of the outer belt here, you're still in the uh, magnetosphere. But I think I got all the science there is in the magnetosphere. But maybe what I could do is push myself outside of the magnetic sphere. See that? I don't think I got far to go. Oh, what key shows the belts? It is zero, but on the numpad. That's what shows the belts. And you can go like one to just, there's the inner belt. There's the outer belt. And there's the magnetosphere. But what I'm looking at, see, I don't think I'm going to collect, I'm not collecting any more science, but what I'm thinking I might just do, I got some good electric charge. This is at least the furthest I've ever gone from Kerbin, though I'm very disappointed, or not Kerbin, Earth. Where is Earth? <laughs> there we are. But I'm a I'm quite disappointed with uh, the lack of science I'm getting out here. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one more pass. I got an idea. Get myself close to periapsis again. I'm going to push it out of the magnetosphere. That should be some more science from that. So I've got to be a little careful here. My periapsis is 81 kilometers. I'm very close to my prograde vector, which is nice. And what I want to do is take this and just push it out past the uh, magnetic sphere and get, I should, I think that's another, I was going to say the word biome. It almost is like a biome. But the radiation scans don't work on high space, low space, that stuff. They work on whether you're in or which belt you're in and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm just going to get myself closer to periapsis. Then we'll do this burn. Still working on this core booster too. I, I haven't even unlocked the or gotten the probe going yet. So I think I should be able to fly this from here, right? So a little bit of throttle. Yep. Point it a little closer to prograde. There's what I'm doing. See that? Pushing that out, 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 out. I think that should be good. Let's get out there. And then I think I might deorbit this thing. But to be honest, I did this with a lot of fuel. See, now look at, I just want to point out the whole thing with the Delta V. This was well under a thousand uh, on this stage, and I've done nothing to this stage. And now it's saying 1232, which actually that seems reasonable for what this stage would be. So yeah, the DV calculations are something whacked about them. There we go. We are collecting radiation scans out here, and we're done. And it's been transmitted. So all told, we sent 8.6 science home. I really don't think there's much else I can do with this. So what I think I shall do is just deorbit it. So get out towards Apoapsis. Like that. Where is the Earth? 
<laughs> Very hard to find. There we are. We are the furthest away from Earth we've yet been. Oh, I have no signal. No, I, yes I do. Why am I... Oh, I'm time warping still. Oh, yeah. Surprising how often I do that. Okay, so there we go. I've deorbited this. We're going to let it crash because there's nothing else for us to do. We'll head back to the Space Center, see what we got. Um, why aren't I running the temperature scans for high space? Wasn't I running the temperature scan for high space? Did I not turn it on? I thought it was there. Now you got me. If, if I wasn't running the temperature scan for high space, let me just take a look. Here it is. I can check from here. Uh, the temperature scans from high space are all done. It's on waiting. So I've already been in high space with a temperature scan. So there's no temperature scan to get. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to here. And uh, I got a little bit more science. I think I can unlock another nose. So there's something. And... What I can do is take off the science that's on this, because it's, that has got no purpose. Put on the mystery goo. Science, there we go. And there's that uh, engineer chip, so maybe I'll put that on too. And there's two mystery goos, by the way. There is now, this is coming from restock, an inline, that's not, this isn't the materials bay. This is the inline mystery goo. But it is heavier, so I'm going to go with this mystery goo. Come on. Well, let me get in there closer. There we go. Let's stick it right on the top. Okay, and take a look at some of those torque numbers at the top. It's not bad, so I think that's pretty good. And... We can right click on the probe body. We can remove the, put this to none because there's no useful science for us to collect. Oh wait, the light, I got the light, the mite. What's the mite? Oh, that's an experiment I could do. Space low and space high. Okay, okay, here's some science. I should have noticed this, okay. Um, I got space low and it's biome specific space low. You got to be in an inclined orbit. Might get this going. Uh, what is this thing called? It's the Magnosity Ionospheric Transmissive Evaluation. Okay, so it's just space low, space high. Oh, I might do. Okay, so you know what I think I'll do? Is I'll still keep this one. You do want to take these experiments out if you're not going to use them because they do have some mass. See, that's two kilograms. But what I think I'm going to do is have this one be QB2. And I'm going to build this. And then I'm going to also build with these ones off. I'm only going to go for the low orbit. A, uh, actually, you know what? Just keep them on. The heck with it. Just do it. Um, this will be a QB3. This will come off, and we'll get the mic going. So, configure the crude experiments. Just trying to get as much science as I can. So, the mic experiment here does do, I can take the telemetry report out, but the mic experiment does do, um, it is a low low space and high space, but it's biome specific. So if I put it in a polar orbit, it's going to go over all the biomes, hopefully collecting all kinds of science. So what I'm going to do is do that. Uh, that should be good. And that's going to be QB3. Hopefully, I'm not going to save these all separately, but I'm hoping they get built with separate names. Uh, build. So show the list. A lot of windows open. Yep, there we go. Okay, so that's some useful stuff being built. Quit. 
Yeah, space low biomes is anything when you see that it's biome specific. Why can't I leave? Oh, here we go. No, I don't want to save. Don't want to save. Okay. And we got a lot of messages here. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so the tracking station is being built. That will be useful. And what's next? The QB2. And we are going to... Let's just get into the tracking station. So this is gonna, should give me maneuver nodes. That should really help. Oh, I also got some science. Science. Yep, I should unlock a node. Exactly right. Uh, let's get rid of all the magnetic sphere stuff. So, again, I want to launch when the KSC... I'm going to time warp right now. I want to launch when the KSC is below that orbit. I'll do it from this side. So it's going to be pretty much right at sunrise. Okay, that's close enough. Oh, did I roll it out? I hope I rolled it out. Okay, so science first. I agree. So I can get gadgets, which is a bigger antenna and a bigger communication antenna both of which are useless i just want to point that out not a bigger a bigger solar panel like ugh, that's frustrating here we got bigger decouplers even though i don't have bigger tanks bigger radio like i got launch clamps that's the only useful thing i see in here so i think i'm better off waiting and unlocking some of these up here so yeah so I'm not going to unlock any nodes because that's kind of not useful. Uh, but what we are going to... Oh, I got to roll it out. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I did all that timing and then forgot to roll out. So I bet you now I'm past. Ah. I forgot to roll out my ship. I bet you now the KSC has passed its part. Yeah, it is. So we'll time warp again to the other side. Yeah, oh, are those ScanSat satellites working? Because I'm seeing like it looks like they are. How are those contracts doing? 16% and 5%. I think they turn on and off so often, I think they're going to take a long time. Okay, so again, it's going to be a night launch, so sorry about that. Okay. Back to here. So we're going to go for that uh, inclined orbit. And hopefully, do it successfully. So let's launch. I'm really eager to do the moon one. That's what I want. Now that I got maneuver nodes, I think that should really help. So once again, the idea here is we're going for this green orbit. Center this on Kerbin. You want to launch right when that's below. Now last time, I got to go to the north again. I do. Last time I launched 20 degrees north of east and I didn't think that was enough. So I'm going to go another 20 degrees. So we'll launch... 
40 degrees north of east. So 40 from 90 is 30 degrees. We're going to launch. That seems a lot. Let's try 35 degrees. And again, this is just guesswork on my part. Okay. All right. So we're going to run our orbit program. 35 degrees and 80 kilometers altitude. I just want to make sure that makes sense. So before I did 70, no, it doesn't make sense. What am I talking about? Oh my gosh, that's way too far north. Last time I did 70, I wanted to go another 20. That'd be 50. Oh my gosh. There we go. I think that makes some more sense. Let's see. Boom. It's 34 degrees on the contract. That is 100% right. But we're launching from a latitude of 28 degrees. So it's complicated. The math is not simple. It's all spherical trig and stuff. So I'm just shooting it from the hip. Um, if I was on the equator, I would absolutely just be going into a 35 degree inclined parking orbit. Because we're not on the equator, life is just complicated. That's just what it is. <laughs> so we'll see what we get. Maybe one day I'll look in the math of all that, but right now I'm just kind of shooting it from the hip. Okay, and stage. We'll see what we get. Okay, so we are going for this. Where's our contract? This contract once again. This time I do have the mystery goo aboard. Fortunately, the mystery goo does not have any transmittable science in Kerbalism. You have to return it. So there's no science to collect, so I'm not even going to bother turning it on. I have collected the mystery goo in space near Earth, but I haven't done it in high space. But I'm not going to this time either. And this is my designated orbit. There we go. Okay, about to lose the next boosters. Alright. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Tyler's just saying, spherical trick, yucky. Just just strap on some extra boost. And that's what I'm actually doing. I'm I you know, the, this thing seems to have a lot of delta V, so I'm not making any modifications. I'm just going for it and hoping hoping I can get her done. Okay, we are at our 80 kilometer. Orbit, how did our inclination, how does the inclination look like? That's not bad. Now I went, I went a little too far north. So you can see my blue line there. And you can see it's inclined a little bit too far to the north. So last time I went a little bit too far south. This time I went a little bit too far north. But now I have, oh my gosh, time to apoapsis and all of that wonderful stuff. That's exciting. I can make maneuver nodes. Oh, oh, still don't have SAS or anything like that, but, you know, one thing at a time. Okay, we're going to lose our fairings, deploy our little antenna. All right, so 50 seconds from Apoapsis. I don't need that Kerbal Engineer chip now. Now I want to go a little bit to the south, see if we can pull our inclination southwards too. But to be honest, probably shouldn't worry too much about it because it'll be cheap to make the inclination change out there. That's really kind of more the idea. So watching my time to apoapsis, not letting it get too low is really the idea of all this. Much, much easier than guessing. Oh, oh, SAS, SAS. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting I have SAS. Silly. More thrust. Okay, I can reduce throttle now because I'm noticing my time to apoapsis is actually going up. 
And this time I'm not going to do, I'm just going to go for an 80 by 80 orbit. There we go. Um, and use maneuver nodes. No more guessing at this. So there's my little orbit. Uh, let's get rid of all the other satellites so that they're not distracting us. I mean, it's not... It's a little bit off, but it's not terrible. So there is my target. Um, I should be putting the node, my maneuver, right where... Yeah, it's got a descending node right here. So I'm only 11 degrees off. So I want to be right around here for my maneuver and pushing it out towards that a N because that's going to be where I'm going to make my plane change. So do that. Oh, this is so sweet. Maneuver nodes. What a concept. Okay. So just like that, but it's only going to be an 11 degree plane change and it's going to be way out there. So, and I'm just again, eyeballing that. A little less. That's 4.07, and this one's 4.2, and this one's 4. Point, that seems reasonable. Okay. So I've got a 735.1 meter per second burn, and it is an 18 second burn, and it's coming up in 10 minutes. So I'm going to stop quite a bit early. I do have to watch. my solar exposure but right now it's saying perpetual which has got me pretty happy I want to start early because it's going to take me some time to kind of maneuver this into position Yeah, I could turn the SAS off, but it's it, the electricity is perpetual, so I'm leaving it. And I'm wondering if the SAS, although physically it shouldn't matter, it has something to do with the fact that this doesn't seem to be tumbling like my other rocket. Well, that makes sense that, yeah, it's because I'm not, yeah. It makes sense that it doesn't tumble like my other rockets because of the SAS. Uh, let me let me get me pointing in the right direction and I'll, I'll explain. Okay, off. Let that move across. Oh, no, it does stop. Okay. SAS off. Okay. Let it cut over there. It does seem to stop tumbling if I time warp with SAS on. I don't think it should, but it seems to. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to get myself around that prograde vector. I can see there's a staging event right at the end of this. There's my maneuver node. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. And, I don't know, we'll see. I might not wait to the actual start burn in pit. Just kind of, just... Oh, because my throttle is so low, all of a sudden it's going, oh, it's going to take you forever at this throttle. Yeah, I just want to get around where the pro where the vector is thank you very much okay, SAS on okay so if I cut throttle there we go there we go okay I'm gonna I'm gonna start a little early just because I know it's gonna be um, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of fiddling with it there we go Oh, this is great! Oh my gosh, maneuver nodes! Maneuver nodes! Okay, we're gonna get a staging event right around here. I might cut my throttle. Oh, oh, that was... And then, and then... <laughs> a little bit ugly. A little bit of ugly on the separation there, but we're going again. Is it 4.1-ish? Something like that. 
Let me take a look. Let's get rid of this. How's that look? I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a maneuver way out here. My electricity still says perpetual, so that has me happy. Uh, we're going to do some prograding. We're going to do some normalizing. You want to combine these two burns. So the whole, this little bit of an inclination change is really not going to add too much to it. Um, yeah, and then it's really... You know, it's sort of funny. If, if you see an argument of the periapsis here, that means you need to get this periapsis onto that actual periapsis. But I do not see that argument of the periapsis. So all I need to do is get the inclination right, which I can do just with, with eyeballing it, and get the periapsis and apoapsis right. So the periapsis and apoapsis... Uh, 4.07, so a little bit more. I see 4.076. I got 4.078 and 4.2. Okay, so that's a little bit, a little bit more on this. But then 4. Point, yeah, it's probably close enough. But if you want to adjust them even further, like for instance, if I want to bring this periapsis down, then what I need to do, because my altitude here is higher than there, is I need to push this periapsis away from me. And I do that by burning radially outwards. So if you want to add a little bit of radially outness, and I'm lying, it goes the other way. No, radially inless pushes the periapsis away from you. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> Either way. Uh, so if you want to dial that periapsis right to... 4.077 I'm actually really you can do it just with the radial parts it's going the wrong way again 4.07 see that's really close there right there and then if you want to you can dial in the parrot now notice my apple wapsis isn't high enough and again I'm going to emphasize I'm pretty sure I'm more than close enough but my apple wapsis isn't high enough so I need to put a little bit more energy into the orbit and then I need to do the same thing I did before. Bring that periapsis down to about 4.76. And then look at my apoapsis. It's pretty darn close. So you can adjust like every pyameter. Pyameter. Pyameter is a word. No, every parameter you can adjust it just with the right things. But I think that burn will do it. And it's only 446.4 meters per second. So I'm going to just go... A little F5 here. And um, let's actually use alarm clock to time warp out there. My electricity still says perpetual, so that makes me happy. I'm not going to use... That's not what I want. Alarm clock. That one. I'm not going to use this warp 2 because that stops me a minute before and I'm not convinced I'll be able to turn around in that amount of time. But I can use this... And Gay stopped me like three minutes before I hit that maneuver. Like that. Okay. Why is there no warp 2? Is that in the settings? Usually there's a warp, like a button here. No. How do you get into the settings? I, I like to have a warp 2 button. I always thought there was a warp 2 button. Maybe they changed something. Ah, whatever. Okay, we'll just, we'll just, it should stop. So say goodbye. Oh, there is no warp to control in KSC. I might be just thinking of the stock alarms or something, just getting mixed up with something else. Thank you. I mean, it's going to stop anyway, so it's not like it's a big deal. We can take in the view a little bit. I'm watching my electricity. That's the thing I'm the most paranoid about, but without the tumbling, it's just not happening. So the alarm is just about to go off. I'm three minutes away from my burn. Okay. De delete that alarm. Get rid of alarm clock. And I can probably now, now I can make my own decision. I'm going to go a little closer. My signal's good. Communications are good. 
kind of happy that I don't have to worry about ground stations now. Okay, minute and a half. All right, so got to give myself a teeny amount of thrust just to get going in that direction. I'm going to turn SAS off so it'll tumble. There we go. We get going in that direction. Here's my maneuver. Oh, and I'll just watch this. Okay. And put on SAS. Get it a little bit of throttle there. So just right on to... I can control it. You don't need SAS. There we go. A little closer. And again, I'll probably start a little early. Out here, the t you know, uh, timing's not that big a deal. But basically, I'm not going to watch the maneuver as much as I'm going to watch this. When this contract goes green, then I know I got it. Okay, let's go. We'll go most of the thrust. Most of the thrust. There we go. Well, this is working out pretty well. Considering this was mostly done shooting from the hip. As it were, might make me brave enough to try that other go into an equatorial uh, one. Probably isn't too bad. Okay, and actually, if I hit the warp to while. Well, the alarm clock was active it would have stopped me three minutes ahead anyway I could have used that button okay so now I'm just gonna lower my throttle because I'm getting very close and I'm just really watching this as soon as this goes green I'm gonna cut oh it did go green I didn't even notice <laughs> I was waiting for these blue to compare but it's this one and then there's the old maintain stability for 10 seconds which I find actually kind of funny like I guess that you didn't somehow fluke into that. Beautiful. Oh, that is like 125 curb bucks for that contract. That has got me excited. I think, I think, I know there was a little bit of flaffing about um, earlier on with this one, not seeming to progress, but that, that to me, being out this far and uh, not nah, got some science going. Nah, this thing's not got science going, but I got another one coming that's going to do that might experiment. We'll, I'll probably go back and I'll do that other um, orbital insertion one. We'll put up some satellites. Feeling like... How much money do I have now? I'm feeling like... That, that's the thing I was the most worried about was money. And I'm feeling like I'm starting to... You know, my funds are starting to feel a little bit more... A little bit more secure. So maybe I'm... Maybe I won't be as much of a bad mood next week. Because I felt like I was this week. But... While we take in this view here, I think I am going to be drawing this stream to a close. So I'm going to thank everybody in the chat. I'm going to thank everybody watching this at a later date. And of course, an extra, extra special thank you to all of my Patreon patrons and YouTube members who continue to support this channel. Have yourself a fantastic week, and we'll see you all next Tuesday. Bye, everybody.